Hey, this is John with Two Moose Home Inspections, and today we'll be talking about your electrical service panel and what you need to know. Welcome to Inspector Insights. This six-part video series will be discussing the service entrance panel, fuses, circuit breakers, ground fault circuit interrupters, arc fault circuit interrupters, and whole home surge protection. This video specifically will be discussing the service entrance panel, or the service panel, breaker box, nope, load center, panel board, fuse box, well, let's just call it a service panel. Inside the service panel, the electricity is divided into circuits, which can be thought of as loops. These loops, or circuits, go out to a room, around the room, and then come back. Some electrical systems will have a circuit for the whole room, such as the laundry room, while others will have separate circuits for the lights for the laundry room, or the power receptacles for the laundry room. Separating the lights from the power receptacles will reduce the likelihood of lights briefly dimming whenever an appliance such as a laundry machine first kicks on. Home theater enthusiasts will frequently have dedicated electrical circuits for audio, video, and lighting, which helps to ensure that all of their professional equipment gets the cleanest power that it can without voltage drop or brownouts as components are being turned on and off. The benefit of having smaller circuits instead of one large circuit is that the repairs can be done more safely and more easily. When an electrical issue occurs in a room with a dedicated circuit, an electrician can more quickly diagnose the localized issues because they are not looking all over the house for the problem. So where is your service panel? Service panels can be located anywhere in the house. Garages, hallways, behind doors, on the exterior of the home, those are all common locations. But we have also found service panels in closets, bathrooms, behind appliances, and covered by wall art. There are many specifications about where service panels are and are not allowed to be, but we can save that for a different video. Service panels are made of sheet metal and normally come in gray or white. Although they're not supposed to be painted, that simple little fire safety precaution hasn't stopped anyone. When properly installed, the service panel is grounded and doesn't pose a risk to anyone. But if the cover is missing or incomplete, live electrical conductors can be exposed to the touch, which could result in serious injury or death. I can't stress it enough, don't mess around with electricity. Some houses have multiple service panels, which would be referred to as sub-panels. The service entrance panel is where the electrical supply enters the house and then is distributed throughout the house. And the sub-panel may be one of those distributed locations. Some houses have a service panel for the house and a sub-panel for the garage or workshop. This is because the workshop might have the need for multiple circuits for lights, receptacles, specialty equipment, and so on. You will also see subpanels in condos. The condo building will have a main electrical distribution room that can control each unit when repairs need to be made. And each condo unit will have a dedicated subpanel inside just for that unit. The only difference between a service panel and a subpanel is that a service panel supplies the subpanel, and the subpanel must have an isolated neutral bar and a dedicated ground bar, whereas the service panel's neutral bar is grounded to earth. So what is a neutral bar? Glad you asked. Let's take a detailed look at the service panel. Most service panels are 14 inches wide, so they can fit between wall studs that are normally set at 16 inches on center. The panel is made of metal and it can be located indoors or outdoors, and its purpose is to protect you from making contact with energized parts. The cover is referred to as the dead front, and if it's installed correctly, you shouldn't be able to touch the electrical conductors inside the panel, but far too often, holes are left in the cover and not filled with a filler plate. There are two potentially deadly issues that can be resolved for less than $1. They are filler plates that fill in the open spaces in the panel cover, and to use the appropriate blunt nose screws. Far too often, people use regular screws, which can cut into the electrified wires. Please stop trying to kill our inspectors and spend the extra dollar to keep you and our inspectors safe. Up next is the main device. This can be a main breaker or a main lug. A main breaker allows the user to turn off all the power to the panel using the main breaker and it also protects the wires coming from the supply to the house. A main lug only is just what the name implies. It is a lug only. The electrical disconnect is located elsewhere, and this is 100% acceptable. The bus bar is an extension of the incoming power, and it is where the breakers attach to allow power distribution to the circuits. Normally, there are two bus bars that each supply 120 volts, which means you can use both to get a total of 240 volts for large appliances, such as electric ranges and clothes dryers. Some service panels allow the use of twin breakers, but you must check the information placard to make sure your panel can accept them. The neutral bar is where the neutral wires go. Think of a circuit as having a positive and a negative, or a hot and a cold. To simplify this concept, 
think of the neutral bar as where the energy comes back to. There can only be one neutral wire installed per hole on the neutral bus bar because that is the only correct path for the hot electricity to return to the neutral, and that connection must be perfect. The ground bar is where the ground wires go. Think of this as your electrical safety path if something goes wrong with the hot and the neutral. You can have up to three ground wires per hole because all ground wires are all paths back to ground. That pretty much wraps up our discussion about the service panel, but we still have a lot to talk about with fuses, circuit breakers, ground fault circuit interrupters, arc fault circuit interrupters, and whole home surge protection. The next video will be discussing fuses and why we don't use them anymore. Thanks for watching, and if you have any questions or would like to schedule a home inspection, please visit twomoosehomeinspections.com. Have a wonderful day.